How's it going guys? Aaron here and welcome back to another video. In today's video I wanted to cover a very important topic that's uh, important to the entire Apple ecosystem and that is the Apple ID. Um, now there are a few things I have written down on my computer and you'll see my eyes darting back and forth a little bit just to make sure that I cover the points that I wanted to and in the correct order. So bear with me. Um, so first thing I wanted to cover is what is the Apple ID. So the Apple ID is the username, simply the username, that allows you to sign to Apple services. And you may ask, okay, so what what do you mean by username? Well, it's an email address that you either have brought in uh, that's pre-existing, possibly a Gmail address, an AOL, whatever you use for your email, and you've used that as the username as your Apple ID. So during the creation process, um, it asked you possibly for a pre-existing email address and you would have entered that there. Now sometimes as a minor, if you're creating it uh, for a minor under the age of, I believe, of 13, or if you don't have a pre-existing email address or you just want to use a brand new email address, you can create one with the uh, domain you know, iCloud.com, so it would be whatever, whatever at iCloud.com would be your Apple ID and it would also function as its own email address. So it's going to be an email address that's going to serve as your username for your Apple services, which is your Apple ID. Okay, it's going to probably have its own dedicated password that may very well be different than uh, your email address password. So keep that in mind and keep track of it, it's very important. All right, so how do you create one? Well, on a new device or a device that is not currently signed in with an Apple ID, um, I believe you can just go in and into the settings, go to uh, iCloud, and start to hit create a uh, new Apple ID if you don't have one. Um, if you need to create one for a child that's under 13, you would need to set up family sharing, which I'll cover a little bit later in this video. Um, but you would do that from your device with your login so that you can actually um, set up family sharing and then create a child account, which is then linked to your account using family sharing so that you can manage the account. All right? Um, so that's how you would generally create one. Now, why is it important? It's important because it allows you to access the Apple services, and those services can be broken down into four main categories, and that is the first one being the App Store for both uh, iOS and Mac products. The second one is the iTunes Store, which is used for things like music, movies, uh, I believe podcasts and ringtones. The third one is Apple Music, which is Apple's music streaming service. I think you can stream with something like ridiculous like 40 million songs. And then the fourth one is iCloud, which is a super important one. It's used to sync data across devices like contacts, pictures, notes, calendar information, all that kind of jazz, and I think even more. Um, and I think it uh, allows you to bring settings across so you have a nice continuity between the experience you get in the different devices. And it also allows you to make uh, backups of the remaining non-sync data uh, from your uh, smaller devices, which allows it to be packaged up and then unloaded onto either a brand new small device or onto a device that's been restored and is now, you know, for all intents and purposes, uh, ready to be set up as new. All right, so those are the four main um, categories of services four main services that Apple provides that would take advantage of your Apple ID. And so some people say they have an iCloud account and they have an iTunes account and this and that and this and that. And basically, they may have multiple accounts, but in reality, they only need one account. And they want to keep it down. They want to pare it down to one account if possible because it can get confusing if you have multiple email addresses strewn all over the place and different passwords and all types of disorganization. So try to keep it down to one account. One Apple ID can serve as uh, you know, the login for your iCloud and your iTunes and your Apple Music and your App Store. You don't need separate ones for different services, all right? Uh, that's an important point to keep in mind. Um, the next thing is, should I share my Apple ID? Well, if you're part of a family and maybe you have kids or maybe you're the child of the family and you want to be able to uh, have other people in that family or friend group per you know, have access to an app that you might have bought or vice versa uh, or a piece of music or whatever and you don't want to have to pay for it again or you don't want them to have to pay for it again. Well, the easy thing, I guess, is to just log into the corresponding devices with the same Apple ID um, and then just download it as if it were your device or their device. Um, but that's a very dirty uh, way to do this. And the biggest 
the biggest reason why is because oftentimes people do use, uh, for the most part, the Apple ID for all these services. When you do that, it can cause cross-contamination of data, uh, such as contacts and pictures, and things get all mixed up and mashed up. You get phone calls coming across to other family members that shouldn't be getting text me messages um, that are going across family members, children to adults, adults to children, all types of messages. And so you really want to pr uh, prevent against cross-contamination of data. You want to keep Apple IDs separate. Okay, you don't want to cross-contaminate that. So what you do is you have uh, an adult, whether it's yourself or someone else, uh, organize this family structure uh, known as family sharing, and you create the family in the settings. And what happens is, is you can invite people or create child accounts for individuals under the age of 13, I believe, so that you can share purchases uh, so that you don't need to repurchase or you don't need to repurchase a, uh, a piece of content or an app or you know so on and so forth or uh, an additional amount of iCloud storage or an additional um, Apple Music subscription because you can actually share these things at least on the newer OS's and it still prevents the cross-contamination because the data itself is still nicely separated which is excellent um, so that is really what family sharing is for and why it's important and if you don't already have it set up and you don't feel comfortable setting up, you should probably make an appointment for your local genius bar so you can go into the Apple store and have them help you separate things out because it's a big problem. I've seen it happen time and time again and it needs to stop. So the takeaways of this, what is an Apple ID? It's your username for Apple services. It's going to be an email address. If you created one previously and you had a pre-existing email address, it's probably that. If you need to create one, you can either use a pre-existing email address or you can create one from scratch and it's going to be, the email address is going to be at iCloud.com because it's going to be an Apple email address. Um, it's going to have a password. That password is probably dedicated to this account and not necessarily the same as the email address uh, login that you would use, the email address password that you would use uh, to log into the actual email address itself if it is um, from a different provider such as Google or AOL or you know Microsoft in the case of you know MSN and whatnot. Um, next thing I wanted to mention is why is it important? It's used for four main services. It's used for App Store, iTunes Store, Apple Music, and iCloud. Should you share it? Do not share it. Prevent that cross-contamination of data. Trust me, you will thank me later. What is family sharing? Family sharing is a way to share things that are purchased and allows people to purchase it, uh, purchase content, and so that you're going to repurchase and spend more money than is necessary to gain access to content and apps and the like. Uh, but it also allows you to prevent that cross-contamination of data. Um, so hopefully you got something out of this video. I covered a bunch of um, important information about Apple ID and the services that are connected to them. I uh, hope you found it helpful. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. If you have any comments, please leave them below. Don't forget to hit the red subscribe button. And until next time, don't forget to follow your passions. Do what makes you happy. And this is Aaron, signing out.